This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today I'm knitting Easter bunnies. This pattern is used with the permission of Jackie at HeartstringsFibers.com. You can make this Easter bunny either on the knitting machine or you can do it by hand. So hand knitters, here's one that you can do, although I will be demonstrating it on the knitting machine. This one was done with worsted weight yarn and here's one that was done with fingering weight yarn. This was done on a standard gauge machine and this little bunny was done on a bulky machine and this is how your bunny would probably look if you hand knitted it with worsted weight yarn. The only real modification to the pattern is the way that the ears are made. So let's dive in and knit a bunny. My bunny on the mid gauge machine will be 40 stitches by 60 rows using sport weight yarn. When I knitted a bunny on the bulky machine, I used 30 stitches and 45 rows, and I used about tension 4. When I knitted a bunny on the standard gauge machine, I actually used 60 stitches and 90 rows. So you can see that what I'm going for is a square of stockinette. I begin with this E-wrap cast on, then I'll set my row counter to zero, 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 and I will knit my 60 rows for the mid gauge. After knitting my 60 rows, I've turned my tension all the way up from tension 4 to tension 9 so that I could do a quick loop through a loop bind off. So here I am just bringing all the needles out to hold. I'm cutting the yarn, and then I'm going to grab a latch tool and do this bind off. After this is bound off, I'm going to steam it lightly just into the square shape. It's much easier to work with if you steam the roll out of it. Once my bunny's body is made, I'm just going to set it aside to be steamed later and then to be sewn from a square magically into a bunny. Now I need to make a pair of ears and I've been playing around with ears and here's how I like to do them on the knitting machine. I bring out six needles. They're every other needle. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still using tension four with this sport weight yarn on my mid gauge machine. And I knit across from right to left. Now I need to hold these stitches down, so I'm going to use two claw weights. Just make sure to catch all those loops that are hanging down. They're the U shaped loops. So those are hanging there, and then I bring out the in-between needles, and I knit four rows. Now I'm going to use a double transfer tool, and I'm going to do a full fashion decrease on the left, take those two stitches onto the tool, move over by one needle, and put them on the machine, and get that empty needle out of work. I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side. This brings me down from 11 needles to 9 needles and knit 4 rows. Do it again. Decrease on the left. Always be sure when you decrease to put the empty needle out of work. decrease on the right. That brings me down to seven stitches and knit four rows. Now I have too much weight on here. I'm going to remove my clothespin, one of my claw weights, take the other claw weight, move it up, do the same kind of decrease, decrease down to five stitches, one on the left, now one on the right, but after I'm down to five stitches, instead of knitting four rows, only knit two, then decrease in the same way down to three stitches.
knit two rows. Now decrease down to one stitch. I had to switch to the single prong transfer tool on the other end of my tool. Knit two rows. Now, I'm going to cut this yarn and this thing is going to fall, so I'm making sure it's going to fall in my lap. I put my knees under it. Every so often I drop an ear on the floor. I'm just going to pull this through so that pulls the end through that last stitch. Pull that firmly there, the point of the ear, so that forms a nice pointy bunny ear and then on this end where you have all the loops, put your thumb in the middle of the ear and just gather that up. Look what an adorable bunny ear that made. I need to make one more bunny ear and then I'm going to steam my square flat and show you how to assemble it because the secrets are in the assembly. I'm at the sewing machine and I'm going to mark the rabbit based on Jackie's chart. The first thing I'm going to do is find the center of each of the sides. I'll just match these together, pinch it to find the center, and I'm marking with a lead pencil on the wrong side. It makes quite a prominent mark and it won't do any harm. Up here I'll match this one and mark it with my lead pencil. Now after marking those two, I need to mark the center of one of the other sides. So I'll mark this one with my lead pencil, just folding it to find the center. Now I fold it into thirds so I can mark this other edge. And again, I'm marking on the wrong side with pencil lead. This one's not the wrong side, so let me open it. Now I need to draw a circle, sort of a basketball free throw area right here. And for that purpose, I have a cup. I positioned my cup between those two one-third marks and I'm just drawing on, pushing down so the knitting doesn't actually shift and then I'm drawing with my pencil. That'll make it easier for me to do the gathering here which makes the little head. I thread a tapestry needle and I'm going to just run through in and out of these stitches to make these gathers for the head. It's a matching piece of yarn. Very quick, very easy. You don't have to be tremendously accurate, but do take lots of small stitches as opposed to a few big ones. It gathers better with the smaller stitches. So here's my head gathers, and you can look at it from the right side of the knitting. Those are going to be gathered up later to make the little rabbit head, but for now they can just be like that. Now I'm ready to start sewing legs. Now I've been sewing my legs on the sewing machine even though I'm a person who does a lot of hand sewing on knits. I found that it just works really well for these little rabbits. For a front paw, I'm going to take a side of the head right here where the string is and I'm going to point my little corner together making a narrow triangle so that the right sides are together and I'm going to move this yarn out of the way because I don't want to catch it in the sewing and I'm going to pin matching this up along here wrong sides together and of course you can hand sew but it's great to be able to machine sew these especially if you're making a bunch of them here I am machine sewing a leg I have just put this edge under the presser foot put it down I'm on a tiny zigzag and using a matching color of thread. I sew along the leg, it gets tinier and tinier. When I get to the very point, I just kind of pull the point and sew across it. Because I don't like for my, my ends of my paws to be tremendously pointed. If I just pull those pins out and flip this inside out, 
you can see how that's going to work. That'll make a good rabbit paw. Now I'll flip it back, right sides together. I'm going to do this one in the same way, folding the corner together so that it makes this narrow little strip and sewing from here to the corner. Let me do that and then I'll come back and show you how to sew a back paw. My front paws are sewed together here and here and then here's the back of the animal. I'm going to take this dot that I made, right sides together, match it up to this dot on the side and just put a pin in and I'll match my hind leg down to the corner and put pins in. I'm going to swap this pin so it'll be on the top. Now I'm going to sew this just like a front paw from here to here, cutting off this corner a little so that I don't have a tremendously pointed point on my paw. Now that one's sewn and I'm pulling the pins out and I'm going to sew the other one the same way matching up this dot to this dot and matching the corner sewing from here to here. So let me get that sewn and I'll show you how to stuff and assemble. Here's my funny little thing, wrong sides out, lots of little bits of thread hanging. It's fine. Just take your fingers and turn the paws inside out, or I should say right side out. So there we have our front paws. And here our back paws. I tucked some stuffing into this circle and drew it up a little bit. And now I'm going to take one of these strands of yarn where I tied a knot at the neck area. And I'm just going to sew a seam from here to here. So I'll get that sewed and come back on camera. Now here's my bunny head stuffed and of course the tummy is still open. Now what I'm going to do is poke fiber fill into each of the four paws. There's the two back paws stuffed. So at this point I have some stuffing in him and I'm going to put a little more stuffing in this opening for the belly. Now I'm going to sew the belly shut from here to here, just a single mattress stitch seam. Now what my bunny body needs is for this leg to be brought up to the side and tacked down right here. So what I'm going to do is flip it over, use, use this piece of yarn which I brought across from the belly, and I'm just going to sew this in several places and tack this last half inch or so. See how that leg looks tacked into place? Now I'm going to bring the other leg up on the other side and sew it into place. Now my bunny clearly needs ears. I'm going to sew this ear on, gathering the bottom a little, from here to the middle of the back of the neck, and then I'll sew the other ear on. I'm just going to hold it like this and put a whip stitch across there going through those different 
places between the loops at the bottom of the ear and then I'll end up with a nice big pointy ear for this bunny and then I'll position the other ear and whip it down as well so I'll come back on camera when I've got ears my ears are sewn on and the last thing that my chubby bunny needs before he goes down the bunny trail is a pom-pom tail I've made a pom-pom with clover pom-pom maker and I'm just going to attach it to his backside I just take the two ends of the tie from the pom-pom, make a square knot, and then I'll trim them. Once I attach the pom-pom on the back, Here's my completed bunny. Now these are so quick and easy to make. I'll bet you can't make just one, 